Good evening from Charlotte, North Carolina on the campus of UNC Charlotte where Maryland rolls 56-21 over the 49ers. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Mason, Maryland beat up on Charlotte, yet even a little bit. Not sure it was actually the dominating performance it could have been. What's your takeaway? Yeah, I think that's a fair way to put it, but there wasn't much better that Maryland could have done. Maybe a little bit on the defensive side, forced a couple turnovers, um, done something you know crazy to generate some points from the defensive side of the ball, but on offense, the machine got rolling. I think what everybody expected to see last week came out in full, and when this team gets going, they're really, really hard to stop, and you just saw the offensive line play a complete game, the quarterback play a complete game, multiple running backs hit boom plays, and then... You heard it from Jacob Copeland in the post-game press conference. When it's these guys' time, when their number starts getting called, there's just too many wide receivers on this that are at that NFL level. Somebody will beat you week in, week out, but the real test comes next week. Well, SMU is a test, and if you look at the national scoreboard today, as I'm sure everybody did, the upsets are out there. I mean, Marshall beats Notre Dame. Appalachian State beats Texas A&M. It can happen to anybody at any time. And so every time you play, you still got to win the game. I'll take it. Maryland won this game, outright yep. won the game. Yeah, UNC Charlotte was in there a little bit. They scored 14 points. It's a little even. And then Maryland just goes on a huge run. And it was inevitable, unstoppable. And we're going downhill at that point. The Littleton run was coming right mm -hmm. at me. That was great. The McDonald run. So, yeah, different star every game. Last week was Hemby with the two home runs. This week, you had Copeland, you got Jay yeah. Sean Jones. At one point, Leah was 20 for 21. Uh, Statford had him at 337. Some of that got adjusted back to 305 and four touchdowns. And we talked about it and said, yeah, he was really good, but he wasn't explosively hot, even at 20 of 21. Well, he, he definitely was. It just it wasn't coming, you know, the ball wasn't exactly on time. It was a little bit behind some of the guys. There were some just wide open Maryland players. and something you pointed out there and I, I just love to throw it out there is all that NIL money from Texas A&M mm -hmm. and they lose at home to Appalachian State I think that proves what this game's actually about it's about teams that come together and sure there's a lot that you need with talent size guys that can really play the game but you got to bring a team together you have to have year over year progression of players that come together to win a game which is what if you listen to the great coaches that have coached this game that's what makes football so good is you need everybody working together towards a common goal you can't just buy players in college football that's not how it's going to work but not to hijack the situation from this game no maryland no. still no running back that takes a ton of carries in this one no I mean, little did he got one carry yeah, he, no he, he got more than one. Oh, well, he might have caught a couple passes he, he, but... i looked at the stat board ramon brown had more carries yeah uh you know hemby had a, a handful of carries only got 29 yards so a different star every time. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting next to a couple guys in the press box, an ESPN writer, an AP writer here, let's go to Charlotte, and Littleton gets the ball, and they're all like, where's this guy been? And I'm oh like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't really answer that right now. I don't know why he's not getting the ball 10 or more times a game. But for me, that's how, that would be more my style. You know, these guys, obviously, they want to get the young guys' touches. They need to get a guy like Colby McDonald back in the game. They want, they must really see something in Brown as a running back to have him rotate through the, all those late reps that yeah. they're getting. Well, they're get, but four guys get carries. Clearly they Never know met. they have weapons and they want to use those. They want to they want to make every guy, when you're fresh and you get out there, that's what they're looking for out of this. We'll be back after this message from Viner Forgates and from the big dog, Rick Jacklich himself. We're live here in Charlotte. It's game day. There's a, a, a hundred plus Terrapins here. Ben Page helped put this together. Ben, how's it going building a better football culture at Maryland? Well, I mean, obviously the support of the athletic department, um, the support of our football team is very important. Um, with the fact that we've started getting to the point where we're building the brands where people will want to see it and want to come out, um, obviously very positive stuff. Um, really excited about this season. Anytime you're coming down to former ACC country, you're going to bring the folks out to come out here and party. And uh, this is just another indication of, uh, you know, Terp fans all around the country 
that want to come out and support our team. Yeah. It's a great yeah. thing before the SMU game and every home game. Check out the Old Von Tailgate. They're in lot one towards Toss Theater. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. With Viner Forgates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Forgates, for making your company work is our primary mission. When you look at these groups, you say you've got to build a team, you have to build a roster. Well, Oxley mentions that the offensive line is the most improved offensive line in the country. Mm -hmm. I like the offensive line. Uh, we've talked about the offensive line coach on the show before, but there really is starting to build some depth, and you got to see a little bit of it. Yeah, today. and if you look at the way the team's coming together right now, the spot where the, the spots where there is that continuity, quarterback, running back, offensive line, wide, well, not even really wide receiver. Copeland comes in, new coach comes in on that end. Mm -hmm. And you look at some of the spots where Maryland's having some problems, defensive line, a lot of guys, new guys are playing. They're not exactly there yet. Linebackers, new coach, a couple new faces in there. They're struggling a little bit. And defensive backs where, I, I really hate to say it, right now Gavin Gibson and Lionel Whitaker and Isaiah Hazel are not at the level that Maryland needs them to be at to win Big Ten football games. And they're missing Corey Coley. They're missing Tarheeb still. I'm going to understand it, and I will acknowledge that. But right now, the guys on the field, that, that's what wins you games on Saturday. And Maryland's got to find a way to either create more pressure. You saw that a lot against Buffalo. That's when they were getting beat a little bit by the quarterback run. Today, a little bit different game plan. And by the time they actually eased into the game, once they realized, I think, what quarterback they were playing, they started to focus a little bit that, yes, the quarterback's going to move around the pocket. I think what Charlotte showed today, especially the quarterback, Xavier Williams, that played for Charlotte, mm -hmm. he can really, he can play. I mean, he was quick. He, he made some good decisions throughout the game, but he was also a freshman playing his, his first, starting his first game here, and, and that showed a bit. But how much can you judge for Maryland in this game? I, I don't well, really know. They came out and they won the game, and they look like a Big Ten team. And you said there's some, maybe uh, not everybody in the right place in the defensive backfield. But the defensive line, there's actually a rotation. There's almost three total rotations of the defensive line. Yeah. And I just haven't seen that in all my years here. No, and, and you look at the third guys that are coming in. It's Isaac Bunyan and mm -hmm. uh, Big Tank Booker. Mm -hmm. And who's starting last year when Maryland's at Minnesota? Tank Booker and Isaac Bunyan. Right. And, no, Maryland got shredded in that game. And, and those guys, you know, they're not – they're not going to win Maryland no, national championship, not household but, names, the, but the fact they that we, they can come out here and those are guys that have taken Big Ten starting reps for this team, mm -hmm. and they're your third, their second, third guys, depending mm -hmm. on what the situation mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. That's that's starting to look like where you need to be to win some games later on in the year. Is have that guy that hasn't taken every rep yep. for six games going into Michigan on a mm -hmm. Saturday. That right. that's not that that's a really tough thing to do. Maryland's in a better spot in terms of that. Right. As we wrap this up here in Charlotte. It was an unusual day because this is one of the first days that Maryland, uh, in in my time here, that I recognized that Maryland came on the road, had a big tailgate party, had a lot of the parents show up, and the football culture sort of starting to build. When you can come on the road and host a large tailgate party, Ben Page, Matt Monroe, a couple guys really put some time in to make sure that this was a special event. It worked really well, and uh, well, thanks to those guys. and. Uh, we will see you in College Park and after the SMU game next Saturday night. It's a big one. Of course, if you're thinking of coming out, come on out. I, I hope that it's going to be a coming out party for your Maryland Terrapins. For Mason Viner, I'm Wayne Viner. Bruce is back in the studio. Good evening. Maryland 56, the Charlotte 49ers 21.